the World Food Program says 95% of people in Afghanistan don't have enough food and millions are at risk of starvation in what's shaping up to be a brutal winter. Let's bring in former Afghan ambassador to France and Canada, Omar Samad. He's also the founder and president of Silk Road Consulting. Uh, Ambassador, let me begin with the humanitarian situation. The World Food Program says 23 million people in Afghanistan are on the brink of starvation, and the next six months are going to be catastrophic. 20, 23 million, that's more than half of Afghanistan's population. What is the yes. responsibility of the United States and its allies? We know billions of dollars in frozen Afghan assets are held in the United States. Yes, Asya, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, let's look back three months ago. Uh, we had a man-made and a policy-made uh, disaster in the making because the man-made part was when Ashraf Ghani, the former president, fled, uh, unbeknownst to anybody. Uh, and uh, then the Taliban entered Kabul and took uh, control of Afghanistan. Uh, then the policy uh, that was devised by uh, and form formulated by the United States uh, and others, especially in Western countries, uh, was uh, one of uh, freezing funds, the central bank funds of Afghanistan that uh, are deposited in U.S. and European banks mainly, and the Taliban were left with no money inside the country. So they are sort of under sanctions. And the Afghan people have been paying the price. And as you said, winter is coming, and we have tens of millions of people who are facing dire conditions. I think, Ambassador, the concern is if these funds are unfrozen, it would get into the wrong hands. What kind of assurances can the United States and its allies get that the Taliban would use that money for the Afghan people? So, I mean, there are mechanisms, there are ways to manage and monitor and control funds. You know, partially, you don't have to release all the funds uh, immediately. You can release them in batches and make sure that they go through a, a trust fund. Uh, we have had trust funds dealing with Afghanistan in the past, where the World Bank, IMF, the United Nations, and others actually manage and control the flow of money. So that has to happen in order for the banking system to, revi to be revived. Otherwise, there's no liquidity. And when there's no liquidity and there are very few people getting salaries, there's no money and the people are stranded and they, they don't know what to do anymore. They start selling whatever they have. And we have heard stories, tragic stories, of people starting to sell their children, actually. And that is something that the international community cannot and should not allow to happen. Well, should economic humanitarian aid be used as any kind of leverage to perhaps demand education for all girls, primary and secondary, protecting the rights of women who can go to work in most places, an inclusive government, respect for human rights, also minorities? Should that be used as any kind of leverage? That has been used in the past. That can be used. Uh, in the situation with Afghanistan, it's a very special, unique, exceptional case because you have, as all reports show, uh, we have more than 90% uh, of the country that doesn't have any more funds to buy food. So when, you face, when you're faced with a situation as such, you need to be uh, more creative with solutions and do it very fast. I think that this is not a question of supporting the Taliban. It's not a question of, and, and, you, and you can find ways of going around that and about that and make sure that the Taliban understand, which is something that we have all, I think the whole international community, as the report from Pakistan said, I've been telling them those three, four items that you mentioned, you know, inclusivity, the women's rights, girls access to school, women working, and the fact that they have to also counter terrorism. All of these things have are valid demands. On the other hand, we cannot let the Afghan people die as a result. Yeah, so what you're saying is engagement and international assistance doesn't necessarily, don't have to mean the formal recognition of the Taliban government. The formal recognition is uh, something the Taliban want. The international community has made it clear that there is a process that has to be involved. There are steps that have to be taken. There are conditions that have to be met. And I think that that is what the position will be. 
And as long as the Taliban are uh, somewhat being behaving the way they are, uh, they're not going to get recognition. But at the same time, there are 35 million Afghans living in that country facing a very difficult situation. And I think we need, we can, and we need to find solutions around the Taliban. Indeed. Ambassador Omar Samad, thank you very much. Tributes and